Hey guys, Son of Liberty here. Uh, today's topic, uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the art of appendix draw. Now, if you are a subscriber to my channel, you may recognize that title. Uh, I actually released that title uh, in a video several months ago, uh, and I just wasn't happy with it. Uh, and since then, I've picked up on some additional information, uh, and so I decided to remake it. Now, in that video, if you are watching this for the first time, I'm going to be discussing a variety of techniques of clearing the garment. Now, if you are a you know a very advanced shooter, uh, you know there may be information that may not be beneficial to you. Uh, if you are new, uh, I hope that this video can help uh, shorten the learning curve for you. If you are new to appendix carry and you're looking at ways to uh, better advance your training uh, and, of course, your speed in getting the gun up into the fight. All right. So uh, first and foremost, we have to look at uh, our clothing. Our clothing creates a barrier, especially, of course, if we're carrying concealed, creates a barrier to that gun. Now, uh, I'm going to be discussing several different techniques in order to, to overcome that, uh, that garment. Uh, the first one we're actually going to be talking about is the, uh, I call or refer to as the C-clamp uh, or the actual uh, cupping method, okay? Um, the second method is going to be the thumb method, and that's where we actually use our thumb to create a hook, okay? And it's actually, uh, it works very, very well. Uh, the third method is the pinch method, and the fourth is the grab, uh, as I refer to it. Now, in this video, there's a couple other things that I'll be talking about. Of course, one-handed clearing of the garment, uh, two-handed clearing of the garment, or two-handed. And here's what I mean by one-handed is the one hand is clearing the garment, as well as going for the gun, all right? Two-handed is where my support hand, whether you're right or left-handed, it doesn't matter, your support hand clears the garment while your primary hand goes for the gun. And that's what I refer to for the purposes of, of this video, two-handed, all right? Uh, and I'll also be discussing what's called the threshold. And when I refer to the threshold, is I am discussing the area here to where we've got the garment up into the threshold that it does not impede with our ability to either get to our gun or our magazine if we are running an additional magazine here, all right? So without further ado, uh, I want to also discuss uh, your, your clothing, okay? Uh, not all shirts are created equal. Uh, different shirts and from different manufacturers uh, are going to wear differently. Uh, they're going to hang differently, so they're going to have different lengths. Uh, and they're going to be made out of different materials. So some clothing uh, items that you have may have a lot of flexibility and a lot of stretch, uh, and others may be very rigid. Uh, they may be very form-fitting or such as like an athletic fit. All right, so let me go ahead and talk about the shirt that I've got on now. Um, this is just a standard uh, button-up shirt. Uh, if you wear a lot of these, um, I want to kind of go over some different techniques that you can use to overcome this style of garment. Now, um, from most circumstances, okay, now I won't be going into any detail uh, on, you know, one-handed or, if, or excuse me, if you're wounded, uh, doing off-hand clearing of the garment. Uh, that's going to be more for an advanced class. Um, I'm just strictly talking about your primary hand and in any other normal circumstances, using both hands to uh, go for the gun. Once I've discussed all these options, then I'll go over to the actual grip, all right? So, uh, most circumstances, I would use my offhand to clear uh, this, this garment, all right, to get to my gun. Now, as you can see, I'm not very successful in doing that. It's the way that this shirt is designed. Now, uh, one thing that you could do is you could actually do it quicker using your primary hand and doing a one-handed technique, okay? Um, it depends on what type of garment that you've got and it depends on what you're comfortable doing. But I just wanted to show you that as an option. Another option that uh, you can also do is unbutton the very last button on the shirt. Sometimes that, that will give you more success in clearing the garment to get to the gun. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, okay? So those are just a couple things that you need to keep in mind. Now, um, let me actually change shirts here real quick, and then I'm going to go over some of the other uh, primary methods for overcoming the garment. All right, so I've just got a standard uh, polo on from Under Armour. Uh, it's a very flexible shirt. Uh, generally speaking, if I wear polos, these are the types of polos that I like to wear. It makes it very easy to overcome the garment. 
get to that threshold in order to get to the gun. All right. So let's talk about some of the other methods. Uh, we were referring to and what I demonstrated just a moment ago with the button up shirt was the cupping method. And what I end up doing is actually cupping uh, with my right hand, pulling the gun up or pulling the garment up to get to the gun. All right. Now, if you are going to do a one handed clearing of the garment. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. You may have bags uh, in your hand. You may uh, be in a situation where you're startled and for whatever reason you don't drop those items. Okay, Your first instinct is to go for the gun so you automatically do it uh, just out of a response. All right, So that's, that's one reason that you, you might use a one-handed method. Another one is if you are a single parent or a, you know, a, a parent at all and you've got a small child or your, your child in your arm. All right, um, Most people will carry their child in their uh, support arm because if you are right-handed, you're going to do everything else, open car doors, open doors, you're going to do that with your right hand, okay, uh, or your primary hand. So anyway, uh, one method for doing this, uh, again, the cupping method, is if you cup the garment, and when you bring the garment up to that threshold, what you can actually do is then pull the garment into your body. You can use the base of your palm and the very beginning of your forearm to trap the garment against your body. Okay, And by doing so, now we've trapped that garment against our, our body. Now it gives us that area that we need to get to the gun and we just have to be quick by pressing down and going for that gun. Okay, So that's one method. It's, it would simply look like this. You pull the garment up by a cupping method, pull it up and trap it, go for the gun, bring it out and do what you need to do. Okay. All right, so the next method that we're going to be talking about is the thumbing method. And that is essentially very simply where we use our thumbs to create hooks in order to get the garment to do what we want it to do. All right, so let me just show you a simple technique in order to do this or a simple way. Essentially, you use your support hand. Uh, you start low under the garment. Uh, you can either start with hands down. Even if your hands are up, you can simply drop it, take your finger, and basically as very firmly against the body, uh, create that uh, small gap in between your skin uh, and the shirt so that that way you make sure that your entire thumb is underneath the garment. You drive the shirt up, okay, creating a hook while your primary hand goes for the gun. Okay, so, you know, it's going to essentially look like this. That's one way. Uh, another way that um, I believe that the hook has an advantage in certain situations um, and let me paint a picture for you if, if I can. Uh, let's say you're in a situation to where you're with your spouse, you're in an area, and your spouse is someplace that you, uh, you don't have access to, you can't see the individual, um, and you are waiting for that person. Okay. Now let's say an individual walks in that has got your spotty senses going nuts. Your sixth sense, your gut instinct is telling you that something is off. So in a situation like that, you may not be able to leave. You're forced to stay because you've got a loved one there. One method that you can do uh, to go to the next level of readiness is I'm sure you've probably seen somebody standing somewhere like this with their hands in their pockets. Well, one thing that you can do is take your thumbs and slip them up underneath the garment like so. Now, if the situation arises and you need to go to your gun, it's just that simple. You simply drive up or to the opposite side with your thumb while the right hand slips over and goes for that gun, pull it out and do what you need to do. Okay? Again, that is the thumbing method. All right, so the next method we're going to be talking about is the grab method. Okay? And that is very simply where we are grabbing uh, the shirt, the garment, whatever we've got on. We grab it, and uh, you'll see a lot of people when they do this, they're, they're very deliberate. They'll grab very firmly against the body. Uh, they'll grab the shirt. They'll bring it up to where they've got enough clearance to grab the gun. They'll bring it out and do what needs to be done. Now, uh, this is just kind of a word to the wise. If you're like myself and you always wear t-shirts, uh, if you're going to use this method, you need to make sure that you do it very deliberately, uh, especially if you are uh, going, of course, and for both uh, clothing items, for both t-shirts, You've got to bring it up because sometimes by using that method, 
uh, your t-shirt, your secondary garment can get caught up down here and it doesn't clear enough to get to that threshold like I mentioned before uh, so it can interfere with you going for your gun. Generally speaking, if you don't wear t-shirts, uh, it is a very clean and generally a very effective way uh, to overcome in the garment. Now, let's go to the pinch method. This is the method that I use uh, primarily all the time for two-handed clearing of the garment. Okay? The method that I was using before was the cut method. So, uh, from a su surrender position or a non-threatening position, uh, the reason that we want to use this, this method and starting from here is because if you're in a confrontation with someone, uh, you know, you can use verbal judo, if you will, in order to, to hopefully de-escalate that situation. Um, and it may work and it may not. Uh, however, if an individual does strike you, uh, you are going to be much more effective in protecting yourself, blocking or protecting your head if you need to, striking. Um, if the time comes so that you can fight your way to your gun, all right? But, so the method that I was using, of course, was the cut method uh, from the, the start of the drill or whatever the case may be. I was dropping my support hand down and rolling the fingers to create that C, cupping the shirt, bringing the garment up, bringing the gun out, and driving out, okay? Um, the problem that I was running into is that um, it was not as successful as I would like it to be. Uh, sometimes what would happen is, is I would go down in a very um, hasty way be to, to clear that garment. Sometimes I would end up either not grabbing enough of it or I would actually miss it completely and have to go back and restart that process over again. Okay. So the method that I have um, adopted, of course, is the pinch method, but let me discuss some of the general ways that I've seen this done personally. Um, I've seen an instructor that primarily wears very uh, loose-fitting t-shirts, very flexible shirts. He uh, really likes the pinch method because what he will do, uh, even from a one-handed position, he can grab the garment someplace, you know, anywhere on the, on the shirt, and he will use a, almost a flick method um, and, you know, from a pinch, flick the shirt all the way up while he goes for the gun, okay? That's one method that I've seen done. Um, the method that I've adopted, uh, Lucas from T-Rex Arms shared this on his personal um, uh, Instagram uh, live, uh, live feed one day, and <clears throat> when he was talking about it and he was discussing his draw, um, you know, I, I just didn't understand exactly where he was clearing the gun. Uh, or excuse me, where he was indexing his um, his support hand to on the garment to overcome it. Let me uh, actually zoom in here real quick so that I can um, demonstrate this a uh, little bit closer. So I've got a tier one concealed uh, holster on and in between the gun and the additional magazine we've got this dead space or this void, all right? It's about an inch deep from the top here to my stomach okay so what he was actually doing is when his support hand would go down he was grabbing that void and it's actually very effective because it lifts the shirt up away from the body okay um, some people may choose to index up on top I don't find that to be as effective because the shirt wants to naturally hang down and of course hug the body all right so what I've started to do, and of course this is what he was sharing with us knowledge-wise, his support hand goes down, it indexes or it pinches this uh, void area on the shirt, brings the shirt up as his hand goes for the gun, pulls it out, does what needs to be done. Okay, so, and that would look like this. Okay, so again, the left hand or the support hand goes down, pinches the shirt in the void area, brings it up while the right hand goes for the gun, brings the gun out, the two hands marry together, and then you drive out, okay? So that seems to be the most successful way for me. Uh, and I'm gonna roll in some footage here of me actually uh, running this here at the range a few days ago.
guys. So I hope that you were able to find some information beneficial to you guys in uh, the different techniques of clearing the garment. Uh, again, if you are new to carrying an appendix and you're just learning this, I really hope that this can help uh, shorten your learning curve. Now, uh, now we're going to be talking about the actual grip. So uh, just kind of a, a little bit of forefront information. This is just the way that I personally grip the gun. It is not the way. It is not the only way. It is just a way, okay? I'm just going to simply be sharing with you the way that I grip the gun after I have overcome the garment, whatever method that I'm going to be using based on the situation, okay? So let's just focus on the grip now. If I am forced in a situation to where I know that I'm going for the gun and I know I'm only going to be using a primary hand, okay, uh, then what I'm going to actually do is once the garment is cleared, my right hand is going to get as high up on the beaver tail as possible and grip the gun so when I come out, my hand is going to look just like this, okay? This gun has already been previously cleared. That is exactly how I'm going to grab that gun. You can see I am as high as I can up on this uh, beaver tail here. Um, and so this is going to give me the best ability to mitigate recoil as possible. Okay. Uh, now driving out and different techniques and different ways that you can position your arm, uh, those are things that are primarily going to be taught in an advanced class. Okay. So I'm not going to go over any of those methods. I'm just simply talking about the grip. So again, uh, if I'm forced to grab the, the gun one-handed, I go up, I clear the gun, and when I come uh, down, I grab out so that I am in the best position, again, to, re to mitigate that recoil. Looks just like that. You can see I am firmly uh, gripping uh, this gun uh, because I need to um, make up for the loss that I don't have a support hand to help me. Okay? Now... For a two-handed method, I do alter my grip when I'm using a two-handed method. Uh, again, this is just something that I uh, personally use. I like the method, so let me demonstrate. Now, when I have cleared my garment, okay, and I go for my gun, my right hand uh, will essentially, these three fingers, will roll up underneath the grip itself, okay, just like so. My index finger will find there's a particular place that my hand always goes to, okay? Every single time when I'm clearing that gun, this is how my hand goes for the gun. So when I come out, it looks just like this. My thumb is uh, basically laying flat here on the rear um, sight. It's almost like I'm pushing a button, okay? My finger is always indexed on the frame, Okay, so that, that way there's no chance that I can uh, slip and go for the trigger Okay, before it's time. And you can see there the three fingers, and this is what it looks like on this side. All right, And the reason being is that you'll see that I've got this whole entire area that my support hand needs to go to. Okay, So I'm going to demonstrate this from this angle to try to get all this in. So my, my primary hand goes for the gun. As it comes out, and when I've reached an area to where I know that the gun is out, it's free of the garment, and I've dropped my elbow, at this time, I can then let go of the garment. My secondary hand can then move in, all right? And what happens is there is a place directly here between the knuckle and the very end of the finger where it actually meets here on the actual frame. Uh, the trigger guard of the gun, okay? So as I let go of the garment, that prompt, that secondary hand comes in and it grips or it actually meets a uh, an index point. And then essentially what I do is as I'm driving out, I roll those fingers in, okay? And then essentially I start to pancake the rear of the grip here. I start essentially squeezing, and then what happens is as I'm driving out, I've got all this area that my thumb can essentially just slide into, if you will. Then the right thumb drops over on top, right in line, okay? Uh, let's see if we can do this a little bit more efficient. So again, uh, my right hand, my left hand goes, I clear the garment. I'm going to use the, the cupping method for this demonstration. Comes up. My right hand goes for that gun. As it comes out, I drop my elbow. Now, um, I've got this entire area that essentially my left hand can 
it can almost kind of slide into so it looks just like this as I drive out okay again let's demonstrate that one more time just like so okay now couple things to mention as again as my right thumb is up and as my left hand here's a couple things that you need to remember your form is going to suffer as you increase your speed okay you want to build a good foundation and have a very good form before you build the speed again slow is smooth smooth is fast all right it's not going to do you any good to increase your speed if you don't have good form all right again this is the method that i've used uh, that i personally use this is a method that i've seen a lot of other instructors use as well so uh, whether you agree with it or not it is something that works for me um, again one thing that we need to keep in mind on the rear here as I am driving that gun out and my support hand comes up to meet almost think of it as like a karate chop we are adjoining the two hands together and then what we're doing is we're rolling those fingers we're just gonna roll them in allow this to kind of pancake here on the rear and then as soon as I do this my thumbs drive forward and point to where I want to go all right now in some of the videos, uh, of course, the video that you saw previously, it is harder to see it even if I slow down the videos. But again, it looks just like that. I am essentially bringing in that thumb right in line behind it as I drive out. Okay. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this video of the Art of Appendix Draw. Um, I do hope that you were able to pick up on some information from it. And uh, if you've not had a chance, uh, I'll make sure to post a link to the uh, previous video because essentially this is a two-part series. Uh, part one is the Art of Appendix Carry. Uh, now, uh, if you are not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on board. And until next time, guys, take care. Be safe.